Okay, so let's have a look at some uh, function questions. Uh, first question to look at, here we go, shown below are the graphs of y equals f of x and y equals g of x. Uh, so we've got, well, those are our two graphs there. And the question uh, wants us to find um, f of g of x equals 3. Okay, so f of g of x equals 3. Um, I guess the, the first thing to, to think of for this is, well, I want f of something that is going to give me uh, a value of 3. Um, so if I, if I start like that, f of u, I want to be 3. Um, and where u is representing g of x. So I look at that to begin with. Well, what values of u uh, are going to give me a value of 3? Um, well, that's u is going to be 0, this point here. Or uh, u is equal to 3, this point here. So if I write that, I can say u is going to be 0, or u is going to be 3. Okay, and then I need to remember that actually u is, is representing g of x. So actually what I've got is I want g of x is 0 or g of x is 3. So I now look at g of x and find the, zero, find the values when it's equal to 0 or when it's equal to 3. Well, it's equal to 0 at this point and this point, and it's equal to 3 at this point and this point. So there's four solutions to, to my final equation. So my, my answers are going to be, well, this one here is going to be minus 1. Uh, this value here is going to be 1. This value here is going to be 2. And then this value here is going to be 4. Okay, so those are my four values for which f of g of x is equal to 3. Okay, question number 2. Uh, consider the functions f of x equals 2x plus 3, g of x is 1 over x where x is not equal to 0. Find g of f of x and write down the domain of the function. So g f of x just means put the f of x into the g. So I basically put all of this f of x here into where I see the, the x here. So that's just going to give me 1 over 2x plus 3. Okay, so all of that f of x has replaced the x there. Um, and then all I need to do for the domain is, well, work out the value this bottom denominator. It cannot be equal to 0. So basically I have 2x plus 3 is not equal to 0. So if I then solve that, that means x cannot be 3 over 2. Okay, so that's my first part of the answer. And then find f of g of x. So this is basically just doing the thing in reverse. I put g of x into f. So this is going to give me 2 bracket. 1 over x plus 3. Okay, so I've simply done the opposite, so I've replaced uh, the x here with 1 over x, and the domain's easier in this case. Well, the only value I can't have, x cannot be equal to 0. Okay, and there we go. Um, for part b, um, find the coordinates of the point where the, the graph y equals f of x and the y of the inverse of g f of g of x intersect. Okay, so the way to do this um, is a little bit tricky when you first look at it. Well, when they intersect, I'm going to have y equals f of x, therefore f of x, and I can substitute it in for there f of x is going to have to be the same as g minus 1 of f of g f of 
x like that. Okay, so um, we're basically yes uh, in that form there. Um, we then notice that this, if we do the g of x to both sides, then g and the inverse of g will in effect cancel out. Um, so that's what we do. So we're going to have g of f of x is equal to f of g of x. So I've just done g to both sides. Um, if I do that, then hopefully I should notice that these are the two uh, functions that I've just worked out previously. So g of f of x and f of g of x. Well, those are the two functions that I just worked out. So now it's a bit easier to, to simplify. So I can, I've can i now basically got 1 over 2x plus 3 must be equal to, uh, that's what I had before, 2 lots of 1 over x plus 3. Okay. Uh, once I've got that, I can basically rearrange and and simplify. I, I should, if I, I rearrange correctly, end up with something like this. 6x squared plus 12x plus 6 is equal to 0. Uh, and then from that, I basically um, well, I either take out a factor of 6 and um, factorize or use the quadratic formula, um, and my solution I'm going to get is x equals minus 1 and y equals 1. Okay, so the, the key one for this is, um, I guess, understanding that the g, uh, g um, and the inverse of g will cancel out. Okay, and then the last question. Um, a function defined, defined by h of x equals 2 e to the x minus 1 over e to the power x. Find an expression for the inverse function. Okay, so the um, easiest way to do this is to start by actually writing that as y. So y equals 2 e to the x minus 1 over e to the x. Uh, and then swap the variables. So I'm now going to have x equals 2 e to the y minus 1 over e to the y. Uh, and now it's going to be a case of trying to rearrange this um, to make it um, so I end up with y equals uh, as my final answer. Um, possibly the first step is to times everything by e to, e to the power y. So that's going to give me uh, e to the y times by x equals 2 e to the y times e to the y minus 1. So that's going to give me e to the y x equals 2 e 2 y minus 1. Okay, and then I'll take uh, the e to the 2 y's to one side. Minus 2 e to 2 y um, plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, this next step is uh, is pretty difficult. Um, we've got to now notice that it looks a little bit like a quadratic equation, um, and it's a quadratic equation in uh, e to the y. So I've got an e to the power y here, e to the 2 y here. And then a number here. So if you think of it in terms of e to the y is equal to u, then I've got, well, let's put this so that this is first, I've got minus 2 u squared uh, plus u plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, uh, and now I can use the quadratic, sorry, there should be an x here as well. Next, I can use the, the quadratic formula. Um, where a is going to be minus 2. Now b, we're going to treat x um, just as the, the constant, as it were, in front of the u. And then the c is going to be 1. So we put these three values here uh, into the quadratic formula. Uh, 
and therefore we're going to get uh, u equals um, and then I'll times everything by negative 1 uh, just to make the calculation slightly simpler so I'm going to end up with x plus or minus x squared plus 8 all over 4 Okay, um, and we then remember that well u is equal to e to the u, so therefore e to the u is equal to x plus or minus x squared plus 8 all over 4. And then finally, to find out what u is equal to, if I learn both sides, I'm going to get y is equal to ln of all of this thing here, so x plus or minus x squared plus 8 all over 4. And let's just check what the question was asking us. Um, and then technically if we're being completely accurate uh, we only take the positive value so y equals ln x plus x squared plus 8 all over 4 uh, for the second value when we take away um, we won't get a solution because we'd be learning uh, what I presume will well, or what will be a negative number and there we go